Hey, I'm welcoming you in the five common API load testing mistakes series. We are doing it together with the Robert Schneider from Wise Clouds, and uh, we have already discussed four major API load testing mistakes you need to avoid. And today we will cover the last mistake, but not the least. And uh, as far as I understand, this will be the mistake about using the third party call, third party APIs. So, Robert, the mic is yours. What, why this mistake is important? and uh, why we need to avoid it. Sure. So a lot of applications these days, a lot of modern API-based applications make calls out to third-party APIs. Now that API, that external API might be one inside your organization. It might be one from a partner or a customer or a government entity, whatever it might be. And a lot of times what people are doing is when they have their functional tests, if they write functional tests for their APIs, they stub out those calls. They never bother to make the call to the external API is part of their business process because quite possible the third party doesn't have a sandbox, they don't have a test bed for you to work with, and in your test environment you can't call their, their production environment over and over again. They'll sometimes there's even money, a monetary cost to doing it that way. So a lot of times what people will do is they'll simply omit the calls to the third party external API as part of their functional testing. And then of course, when it gets to load testing, where now you're gonna to start to bring up production levels of usage of your application, it's understandable that people would not make the calls to those third party APIs because you don't wanna get the third party angry. If it's a government, you certainly don't want the government angry at you. So they simply just bypass doing that. And that's really dangerous because you don't know what level of responsiveness you can get from that third-party API that you can expect in production. Now, this is a mistake that people are making, and I'm going to give you some ideas about how you can surmount it, but really, the, the only way you're truly going to know is to actually see it in production or look at what the service level agreements that your third parties are giving you. But, for example, even under load, if you start to encounter delays on these third-party APIs, you might have timeouts that you didn't factor in, you didn't think about, during the designing of your test. So really it's important to include those external API calls in the functional tests that you're doing, single user path through your application, as well as placing it under load and seeing how it can work. Now, again, you don't have a lot of control over this, right? You can't go to the uh, US government or the EU government or whatever government you might be dealing with and say, hey, we're gonna be sending you tens of thousands of transactions for tests and whether you like it or not. Now you can't do that. But what you can do is consider maybe using like a, a virtualization tool, something like a Service V from SmartBear mm -hmm. under the Ready API product, and say we're going to simulate what this third-party API is going to look like. We're going to simulate its functionality, which you can do. Maybe we'll even just have it do a straight echo back. Who knows? But we're going to simulate that functionality as best we can, and we're going to try to build in some latencies and see what happens. We're going to say maybe that external API that we're calling is going to have a 500 millisecond baseline that it's going to take for us to get results back. And then we're going to build in some variability using the tool to simulate that. Whatever way you go about doing this, it's important to make that effort because you, again, as you might remember from the very first part of this series, if you're not testing a full functional business process, you really don't know how your application is going to behave at runtime when all the pieces are hooked together and operating. So again, as our, our last in this series, the external APIs, which are beyond your control, you still can do a lot with something like Ready API and Service V to at least make a best guess at what kind of responsiveness you might get from those third-party APIs. I know that some some testers they uh, use some hard coded data in case if they do not have access to the external APIs. So, right. do, just your suggestion: do not use it, right? Well, you, it's a start. It's certainly you have to do something. So some people will simulate this, and I've seen this many times firsthand. Some people will go to the developers and say, "Hey, can you stub out the calls?" on the back end to the third party API and they'll say, okay, first of all, that, that takes the developers off their main line of responsibility. Secondly, you're leaving <clears throat> un, uh, certain parts of your application untested. So really you want to do the very best you can. And I, I guess I'm a, I'm a huge believer in virtualization technology because it's exactly meant for this kind of scenario where you don't have to worry now. We're going to say we're going to use some kind of virtualization technology to simulate that call to the government entity that we're talking to. And we know it's not perfect, but at least we'll have some 
idea about what kind of latency we can expect or simulate latency, as well as you just said, Tatiana, in terms of the data, you can use these virtualization tools to put some business logic on the simulated third-party API and actually start to see some behaviors in your application based on what you call them with. So it really opens up the door for all sorts of much more sophisticated testing scenarios from a functional perspective, as well as getting it all the way down to the performance perspective. Again, part of that life cycle of unit to functional to functional under load testing that makes you so much better prepared to place your APIs into production. Okay, great. Uh, thanks. So thanks a lot for all of your suggestions. So uh, thanks a lot for explaining the mistakes uh, that uh, we need to avoid when creating API load test. I'm sure that our customers uh, will uh, use your suggestions and will create best tests. Okay. Well, thanks very much, everybody. Thank you, Tatiana. I look forward to the next series of uh, these discussions. Sure, happy to help sure. We will be happy. Yeah, we will be happy to learn more from you. Okay. okay. Thank you.